name is Mike Cody, and uh, with me today, our guests on the program are Rochelle Stevens and Margaret Wilburn, and uh, Calvin Johnson is going to be the moderator for our program. Uh, this is a pretty historic uh, interview. Uh, uh, Olympic uh, medal winners are going to tell us about uh, their generations of, uh, of uh, stardom in the uh, Olympics representing the United States and uh, to ask them questions is um, a former uh, athlete that ran for Margaret Wilburn's uh, uh, husband, Jesse Wilburn, uh, in high school and uh, Jesse was a friend of mine uh, as we organized the track clubs here in Memphis and uh, Calvin Johnson is the fastest miler that ever uh, grew up here in Memphis and uh, still holds that record. So Calvin, why don't you introduce our guest and get them to talk okay. about what uh, yeah. y'all are interested All in. All right, next to me is Mr. Miss Wilburn. I always refer to her as Miss Wilburn, you know, from the first time I heard about her. And uh, I had the privilege uh, and uh, honor to run for uh, Coach Wilburn at, at Merrill's High School and it started uh, my association started with, with the track team in 1964 when I was a uh, trainer for the team. And uh, I think we had a, a, a run at Melrose that's probably still uh, second to none um, that year when, when the schools were still segre segregated. Melrose finished second in the state uh, to Pearl High School. The next year, 1965, when I became a mem member of the team, we were the first high school team in predominantly black uh, high school to win the uh, integ integrated uh, state championship, the first integrated state championship in the state of Tennessee, coached by uh, Coach Wilburn, who was from the same neighborhood, we were from the same neighborhood from the Beltline, a part of Orange Mound. Uh, from s the next year, uh, 1966, we finished, we won everything except for one regular track meet and we finished second in the state and we finished second in the region. Now we won the region, we won the district. My senior year, we won everything except for the district and the region the state. We finished second in the district, we finished second in the region. We took four men to the state and came in fourth place mm -hmm. and we had one individual who was disqualified, Terry Addison, who had set a record for the 440-yard dash and was disqualified for stepping outside the lane. He made one step outside the lane. So during that time uh, with, with Coach Wilburn, we went from um, state champions, we were runner-ups, fourth place, my, my three years as uh, actually running and, and one year as a trainer. Uh, but Miss Wilburn, it was a legendary uh, Tiger Bell uh, ran with with the great Wilma Rudolph, and uh, who's known throughout track and field as one of the, if not the greatest, I think, female runner in the history of, of, of track and field. First person to win three gold medals in, in Olympics, and Miss Wilburn, they were roommates uh, at Tennessee State. Uh, and my association with Miss Wilburn goes, it's really deep. Uh, <laughs> You know, I went to Tennessee State. I didn't marry Tiger Bell, but she, she coached. Uh, she she taught my wife at Hamilton High School, and uh, so um, we just like family. Her, her brother-in-law and I grew up together, and uh, just a big family. Uh, and Miss Wilburn, uh, I remember in high school. You know, I was just I heard about Miss Wilburn. You know, you know, and you know, Coach Wilburn was like. He was, back then, he was everything and, and something at Melrose. And all we heard was, you know, he was married to a Tiger Bell. She looked real nice. <laughs> I was scared to look at her until <laughs> you know, a couple of days ago, you know, a couple. Of, but we just heard, you know, uh, about her appearance and, and she was a Tiger Bell. That was the biggest thing I'd ever heard in my life, you know. And uh, it was just, it was just, just a nice person. Always been the same. And uh, I recall after, uh, track meets uh, at the old fairground stadium, Mike. I remember you know about the old fairground stadium. Uh, 
she would give me a ride home, you know, and she always she always referred to me as Johnson. She said, okay, good job, Johnson, good job. <laughs> so, so she would always be at every meet, uh, or every meet I, I, I can recall, she was there, you know, sitting uh, right above us or uh, next to Coach Wilbin. So uh, I appreciate her, uh, her uh, uh, encouragement, friendship, and uh, a mentor to my wife, and uh, she can uh, tell a little bit about herself and a little bit more. And we got uh, beside her is the, uh, also from the great Melrose High School's Olympian, uh, Miss Rochelle Stevens, uh, who participated in two Olympics. Uh, so Melrose is, we're known for producing the best and trying to be the best. So that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Wilbur? I really don't know where to start. There's so okay. many wonderful experiences uh, that I've had since I've been uh, uh, really in Memphis. Um, uh, Jesse, uh, let me talk about him just a little because uh, he was just a great coach and Calvin and the other um, runners uh, from Melrose were just outstanding students. And I know uh, I used to get up early in the morning, cook breakfast for the track team so that they could go to school and learn. And um, there were so many outstanding runners at Melrose. Uh, you had uh, Willie Dawson there, uh, Bobby Smith uh, was in that group, uh, and uh, Sheila Eccles was one of the outstanding young ladies uh, that ran, and Gardner was there, and of course, my god uh, daughter, Rochelle Stevens, who reminds me so much of Wilma Rudolph, uh, and she just has won so many wonderful races, and she is such an outstanding person, and I am just so proud of her. But let me get back to uh, Calvin's uh, wife. Denise was a student at Hamilton High School, and she was my uh, administrative assistant. Mm. Now, uh, back then, it was not legal to have <laughs> students as your <laughs> administrative assistant, but she was so smart, <coughs> and she could do anything that really teachers could do, and she eventually became a principal. But uh, I, I'm going to yield uh, the time a little because I want to get into the Tennessee State Tiger Bell situation, but I don't want to leave the high school uh, block before we get into that. So, Rochelle, I'm going to yield to you. And before we get to Rochelle, <coughs> what me. years were you talking about that uh, Calvin and Jesse were on that, that team that okay. was the, 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 the 65, 1965 okay. was the year we won the uh, yeah. state championship. So 1965, mm -hmm. and uh, you and Jesse, were y'all from Memphis? Uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Jesse is from Memphis. From Memphis we right. met at Tennessee State University, got married there, <coughs> and uh, I came to Memphis and have been here ever since. Okay, and so, Ms. Stevens, when you came along, it wasn't 1965, it was in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. I'm an 80s baby. 80s, okay. <laughs> so, so you, but you were at Melrose as well, and you were from Memphis. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, tell a little bit about your high school before Margaret gets us into, mm -hmm. into college. Well, while I uh, attended Melrose, we was uh, back on the rebuilding stage of the girls program, and our coach was Mike Webb. And we had a small team because he ran everyone off. <laughs> I mean, he had to be a soldier to run and compete with him. But while uh, racing at Melrose, I earned 20 scholarships in track and field. Wow. And wow. I also won a state title in the 400 
100 to 200. I was running up in, at the 800 meters. I think I was the first year when they converted the track from yards to meters. Mm -hmm. So before me was uh, the great Tanya Wells who hit the 800 yards record and mm -hmm. then I came in and, mm -hmm. and possessed the 800 meter record of 210, which was still second place at the state. Uh, to run 210 at 800 meters and uh, from there I, I went to Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. I, I chose Morgan over LSU, Florida, and Tennessee uh, because I'd never been to DC, Maryland, New York, and I wanted to race inside of the uh, Madison Square Garden. So I was like, I'm going up that way. Oh. <laughs> so I can make a name for myself in a whole different territory. And that's pretty much my short history uh, as a Merrill's Golden Wildcat. Okay. And so, Margaret, after. Uh, you got, uh, uh, you were at uh, Tennessee State in what years? I went there in 1955, and I finished in 59. Okay. So we're just about the same age, because yes. I was oh, all yeah, 54 yes. to 58. <laughs> yes, so but don't we ask, oh, don't oh, ask the age. Right. <laughs> and uh, why did uh, did you get a scholarship to go to TSU? Yes, I did. Uh, uh, and you were uh, in Atlanta then. When I was out of Atlanta, Georgia. And you know, Mike, I would never have been able to go to college had I not gotten the scholarship. And I'm just so thankful and appreciative of uh, the university for giving me the scholarship because it has opened so many doors for me. Uh, uh, running uh, uh, for Tennessee State University. It was just a privilege. You know, and what you say is true for all of us. We were so fortunate <laughs> to be able to use our ability to run some to get an education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the same experience with you. I, sh I was at East High School mm -hmm. and we didn't have a track. So my coach would take me over to Rhodes College mm -hmm. and I'd run with the college kids. And the mm -hmm. coach over there said, son, where are you going to college? And I said, well, I don't have any money. I probably not gonna go to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, would you like to come here? Mm -hmm. I said, well, sure, but you know, I don't have any money. He said, <laughs> never will forget, the division um, road couldn't offer athletic scholarships. It, they didn't have it in that division. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, son, I know you can run, but can you do, did you do anything in school other than run? <laughs> and I said, well, I was on the student government or whatever. He said, that's all I need. So I got a, a leadership scholarship, oh. but really it was to run. But all of us have had so many blessings from being able to run and get an education. Right, and uh, like I said, uh, if uh, it had not been for Coach Wilburn and you know, uh, being around the track team, I, you know, it would have been a struggle for me to go to college. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was had my choice of uh, a few colleges to go to, and but once I got in college, uh, that's when the opportunities availed itself. Where you know, like I would talk to coaches and said, "Could I come here?" He said, "Oh yeah, well, you can come here. You can come here." So. Uh, when I got to uh, Tennessee State, so I, w I went to college. Uh, I, when I left Melrose, you know, I thought I was in you know, a cup of tea and everything else. Uh, so uh, it took, you know, it took. Well, when I went there, there were no distant runners. Uh, w they came in with me as freshmen, and there were no upper class distant runners. So it, it took a while be before they knew what they had. Then I decided I was going to leave, so I transferred. Came to uh, Memphis, back then, Memphis, Memphis State, State yeah. and uh, you know, on a uh, scholarship there. But uh, it was all because of uh, Coach Wilburn yeah. and the opportunity, the things that he taught us. But when I went to, you know, when I went, when, we went, when I went, uh, I was ready. I mean, all I needed was somebody to work with me because uh, we worked in Melrose. I mean, yeah. we we worked. Coach Wilburn. I mean, I mean. Uh, and he was fair. Uh, what I like, mm -hmm. we didn't run anybody off. Mm -hmm. you, if you came to practice and you did what he said, and he got out, he showed us, and he, and he not only at, at practice, but during the course of the day, if you know, you come through, he, he would take, give you hints and tips about doing certain things, and uh, every, you know, the, the fundamentals and the background, the discipline, I, I was ready, I had some of the same principles 
that I used today was from, from high school, from, from coaching. Well, before you get to, and through your career in, in college, <laughs> tell me something about, uh, you said Jesse would show you what to do. Yes. Had Jesse been a, a runner himself? Had he uh, participated uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in track? And mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, I, I, I believe he did at Melrose. I don't know if he, uh, I, when I when I talked with uh, when I had, had to spend, I mean the courage to ask him stuff. <laughs> you know, he said, he said, I said, coach, I, I said, did you know I try? He said, well, no, I played football. He said, the football coach said you come you came up here to play football. Okay. So I, I don't I don't know if he got an opportunity to actually run track, but he was all American at uh, Tennessee State. Um, in football. In football. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure he got his tips from my godmother, <laughs> who uh, is a 1956 Olympic bronze medalist, and she is the former American record holder mm -hmm. in the broad jump. So I'm sure he was saying, uh, Margaret, what, what my team needs to do? Yeah. And he would go back and, and execute and, yeah. and, and run you all in the ground. I'm yeah. sure he got all oh, yeah. those good gold medal and silver and bronze medal Some tips tip. from his beauty queen that was yeah. I wish house. that was true. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. But well, uh, well, tell us, uh, Ms. Wilburn, about this c career that uh, Stevens has just referred to, because a lot of people mm -hmm. would need to want to know that. Well, Jess and I met when he was a sophomore and I was a freshman in college, um, going to Tennessee State. On Both of us were on uh, scholarship. He was on football scholarship and I was on track scholarship. I actually uh, was considered a long jumper. <laughs> They had so many outstanding sprinters there that uh, May Fags, Isabel Daniels, Barbara Jones, uh, Wilma was still in high school, but she would come up during the summer and, and ran well with us. Um, so I ran, I went there out of high school as the Georgia State champion. And I did everything in high school. Uh, I ran the fifth, the hundred, the two hundred, and I anchored the uh, four by one. And I long jumped. Uh, uh, I was a very, very outstanding athlete in high school. Uh, did well uh, in my studies. And uh, Mr. Temple. Uh, was uh, I was fortunate enough to get the scholarship. Now he was the coach at Tennessee. At Tennessee yes. State, and, and he eventually became an Olympic coach. Yes. Uh, we went to the tryouts, and uh, I was setting American records all over the place in the long jump. So uh, we got to uh, Melbourne. Uh, the Olympics I did, in Melbourne. was in Melbourne in '56. I didn't do well at all in the long jump. In fact, I still cannot get over not winning the gold medal <laughs> in the long jump because I was the lead in the world when I went to Melbourne uh, in the long jump. So I didn't do well, didn't qualify. I couldn't make it out of the first round, but. Uh, when it was time for them to select the runners for the four by one, everyone had to try out. And I was just determined. I said, now I didn't come this far to take nothing back home. I was so determined. I was fortunate enough to uh, run faster than uh, most of the girls, so I was on the relay team. And we were won the bronze. Uh, I ran second leg. Uh, May Fags, who's a great runner, uh, led off. I ran second. Had the opportunity to pass the baton to Wilma, who was in high school at the time. She did well, and Isabel Daniel, who had placed fourth in the hundred, anchored. And we were so happy. Now, during this time, we got third place, but the first three teams also broke the world's record in that meet, the first three teams. Uh, no one expected us to do that well. 
So we got the, uh, I got the bronze, and from then on, it was uh, uphill, and uh, I, I'm just, I'm just so appreciative to have had, to have been given the opportunity to run and represent the United States. And where is that bronze medal now? Do you know, would you believe I went to one of the elementary schools and you know how you pass all of your mm -hmm. uh, paraphernalia around? I haven't seen it since. Oh no. Oh, wow. I have not seen that medal since. Oh my God. And uh, I, I, I really wish one day I would be able to have a duplicate made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like they would do that. I mean, I, I, yes, but you know, kids in elementary school, they they didn't mean any harm. They just wanted to keep a medal right. from the Olympic Games. Mm. So after you finished college, then y'all moved to Memphis. And yes, we married in college. Married, and then uh, I guess both of you were teaching, and Jesse was coaching. Yes, uh, Jess, I finished uh, in 1959. Jesse finished 1958. Yep. He came uh, to Memphis, got a coaching job at Melrose. Uh, he, he pit, uh, Pete Mitchell, they did well. They didn't do anything the first year. They were terrible. They were horrible the first <laughs> year. But the second year, they uh, won uh, a lot of games. I went to every single football game. I was there. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I cannot say enough about how proud and appreciative I am to have had the opportunity to represent the United States as a runner. Well, uh, I don't, Calvin, why don't we ask Ms. Stevens, okay. as someone else who had that oh, opportunity mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to pick up, uh, we know what you did in high school, and you went up to East to, uh, College. Mm -hmm. How was that, and what did you do there? And uh, tell us about that. You know, the coach made it sound like he really, really needed me. And I, I also wanted to go to a school where I was needed and, and not have to try out every single week to mm -hmm. make the traveling squad because I was not the practice type of person. I practiced hard, but it was pretty pitiful. Oh. Mm -hmm. I was considered a showrunner. Uh, Mike mm -hmm. Webb was like, mm -hmm. you're nothing but a showrunner. And I didn't know what he meant until I got much older. Mm -hmm. But something about practice, you know, I'm gonna practice hard enough to get it done, but in a meet, it's another whole level, you know, not out of breath, not mm -hmm. falling out, passing mm -hmm. out, just a whole different uh, ball game. But once I got to Morgan State, uh, in my freshman class, everyone was a state champion in the mm -hmm. same event. Mm -hmm. And all of our times was probably a blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And he only needed one person on his four by 400 meter relay. And that was one of the reasons why I went to Morgan is because they had eight quarter milers at the Tiger Bell uh, relay that mm -hmm. I first saw them. And they won mm -hmm. both relays, the A and the B squad. And I was like, well, if he can produce eight runners, surely he can produce one. <laughs> and that was another reason why I went there. But I mm -hmm. ended up being uh, the fourth leg person that he chose. I ran the second leg on all the relays uh, my whole entire career career at Morgan State University. Uh, I ended up becoming the uh, MVP performer my freshman year, and I was the athlete of the year performer uh, for four years while there. So everyone else kind of just start falling off the bandwagon, flunking out of school, uh, just mm -hmm. different mishaps, getting injured, and I was steady improving. And to this day, I still hold all the school records at Morgan in the uh, 100 with 1117, 200, 2284, and the 400 at 5101. So uh, this past fall at homecoming, they announced that they're going to name the track after me at Morgan oh. State University. Oh, wow. I had not heard that. And the statue. Wow. So wow. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I truly did make steps uh, at Morgan State.
State University and, and just really proud that I chose to go 1,300 miles away from home and make history in a, another whole stepping ground because everyone there was basically from New Jersey, Philadelphia, and New York, and they were all familiar with each other mm -hmm. uh, from the famous pen relays. Sure. And no one never heard of me, but I was like, that's okay, you don't know me, but you will <laughs> before I leave this meet. And and so I missed the MVP, the MVP performance of the whole pen relays by one point my senior year, and I cried all the way from Philly back to Maryland. Oh, <laughs> well, that, uh, what a recognition yeah. that'll yeah. be. That's just, yeah. We'll have to uh, get that on uh, Facebook or yeah. whatever yeah. it is. We'll have to get it on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. Well, what, uh, your Olympic experiences, was that while you were in college or afterwards? I missed the Olympic team by a blink of an eye in 1988, that was my senior year in college. That was the year the U.S. team raced in Seoul, Korea. Seoul, Korea. And okay. I had mm -hmm. I won the NCAA Division I title at 400 meters. I didn't understand the rankings at the time. I didn't even know I was ranked in the top five as one of the top five mm -hmm. Americans mm -hmm. in the whole mm -hmm. country. You know, I was mm -hmm. still battling with the college girls. Didn't know I was mm -hmm. ranked that high. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, my coach pretty much overtrained me and I, I just wanted to make the team so bad. Whatever he said, do. I did it and uh, our training regiment was not the right one and I missed that team by a blink of an eye and I just thought it was over mm -hmm. and so I um, came back to Memphis. So you you had finished school after the Olympics? I graduated like a month before the trials okay. so I, I was on the four-year program which I was ex extremely excited about because uh. I was terrified most athletes was on the seven-year plan or the six-year plan <laughs> just going to college yeah. and and so I didn't know how that will really pan out but I was able to graduate on time with the bachelor's mm -hmm. of science degree right. in telecommunications and sales mm -hmm. and I uh, came back home and uh, called someone to say hello and he so happened was an agent didn't know that so you know mm -hmm. I was truly running for tote bags and ink pens <laughs> and he got me back involved with the uh, sport less than four months later and uh, six months later I was ranked number one in the United States and fourth in the world mm -hmm. in 1989 and it just pretty much stayed uh, at that at that status. I, I was ranked top 10 in the world six times, stayed top five in the United States for almost a decade and a half at 400 meters. Uh, number one in the U.S. Uh, a couple of times at 400 meters and four years later won the U.S. trials and my godmother was sitting there <laughs> looking, where, like, where looking like a queen where, where, in New Orleans. Orleans. She New was Orleans. in New Orleans and uh -huh. she was sitting there. I was like, why well, she got to be here? You know, and, and then she was at the finish line at that and she she didn't scream, she just looked at me like, all right. Oh. You know, she gave me that look. I think I was more afraid of her than I was the competitors. The 400, the 400, 400 meters, and I, so I went from missing the Olympic team by a blink of an eye to being the U.S. Olympic trials champion four years later, okay. and pretty much just stayed on top. And, and where were the Olympics that year? Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona, so that was uh, when you uh, were uh, representing the United States at uh, Barcelona. Yes, we, we came home with the silver medal because uh, that Russian man, Oh. Had outpowered me. Oh, you know, she, oh, so what, maybe had some, you know, she had those sideburns oh, right. and the hair on the chest and the whiskers. <laughs> and, and I did all I knew from my orange mouth skills. I mean, I gave it an elbow, uh -huh. I took out the lane too. Uh -huh. We bounded it all the way. And at the end of the race, she came back and kissed me on his cheek like, oh, wow. while an American has never, ever <laughs> challenged me because, you know, the great Flojo couldn't even touch her uh, wow. in the 88. Olympics, she ran a 47 split uh, mm -hmm. for the 400 meters. Mm -hmm. 47. Wow. Oh, 47. And Flojo ran a 48. And so mm -hmm. they was like, uh, Stevens, that's who you're going to run the anchor leg mm -hmm. against, and we're going to give you a lead. Mm -hmm. So, well, so one the first, she beat, uh, he, she beat you oh. <laughs> in the uh, open 400. Well, she, of course, she, she you beat You got the up. silver there. No, that was on the relay. I finished sixth place in, in the, the open, open 400. 400. 
100 in lane one with 50 11 and I've wow. never ran in lane one I always had lane eight or mm -hmm. lane seven so mm -hmm. my mother who coached me was the first woman in history to mm -hmm. train her daughter to the Olympics we just mm -hmm. started training in lane six and seven every day because I never had an inside lane mm -hmm. so to be in lane one I was like okay what what, what do y'all do back here <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't I realized until I, I looked at the tape uh, six months later that it was four of us right there battling for the bronze but I never knew it because I was in lane one I just felt mm -hmm. that I wasn't in the race and, mm -hmm. and I just ran for time but after I saw the tape I was even going go <laughs> go <laughs> yeah. so but that was then, my but then in the relay we finished silver and I was the silver, anchor leg second, mm -hmm. second uh, mm -hmm. silver medal and, mm -hmm. and were uh, any of the other three women on the team were they people you knew or had you ever run with them before well the way the Olympics are set up the world gets to meet us once every four years but technically we know who everyone is Gosh. in the world because mm -hmm. you have the world championships, mm -hmm. the world university mm -hmm. games, the goodwill games, the world mm -hmm. cup. Mm -hmm. You have the European circuit uh, that lasts nine months out of the year and only the top eight in the world are invited to compete. Uh, we're known all over the world in Europe mm -hmm. because it's the second largest sport to soccer. So we're on television every day like the NBA is here. Mm -hmm. And so we knew each other and the rest of the world just get a chance to meet us once a year, once every four years. And Barcelona was what year, 50? 92. 92. 92. 92. And, and then four years later, Atlanta, yeah, 96. 96. But you didn't run. I ran mm -hmm. there. We won the gold. That's the gold. Oh, that was the gold. <laughs> You've been hiding the, hiding the greatest uh, last. All right, so what, what, what leg did you run on, on the, in Atlanta? What leg? I was the first leg in first Atlanta. First leg, okay. Mm -hmm. So whatever the most complicated leg was, it seemed like I would always be the one to run the most complicated leg because mm -hmm. I was not afraid to compete uh, mm -hmm. whatever, wherever they needed me the most. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and, and my attitude at that time was, okay, we were predicted to win the bronze, but a lot of us was like, this may be mm -hmm. our last chance to mm -hmm. run in the Olympics, and we definitely got to keep this gold medal here. Okay. But my attitude was like, okay, well, if we don't win and I'm the first leg, everybody's going to know that I was at the Olympics because the camera's going to be on me. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> because when you don't win, they don't go to second. Okay, yeah. and, but we end up winning, so yeah. I end up getting so double was, time. That was Michael Johnson's right, year. With the, the gold shoes. With the gold shoes. I, I saw and, it. And I was right and there. Mm -hmm. okay. On the 50-yard line okay. when he did it. <laughs> All right. So who, who else Live. was on that team with you? The on gold, the, the, my teammates, uh, the first leg, I was the first, first leg, leg, and Macy Malone was second leg out of Arizona State, uh -huh. uh, Kim Graham out of Clemson, and Gerald Miles from Alabama A&M was our anchor league. Oh, so you uh, had, you were at uh, Morgan State and- we, we all was out of college. Yeah, I'm then. saying, but you had uh, right. a Morgan State and uh, Alabama. Alabama. So we had two schools from HBCU yes. to, to step up. Uh, in fact, there are only 45 athletes with medals that graduated from HBCUs in the history of the Olympics. Oh, wow, okay. And mm -hmm. most of them are from. List. <laughs> yeah, I guess most of them would be, have to be from. Would uh, a great number would be from Tennessee State. We, we were. They were the mm -hmm. yeah. forerunners. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Because I remember my freshman year at Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. uh, she probably don't remember me, but I, I used to was we ran together was Madeline Manning, uh, okay. Madeline Manning yeah. Jackson. She, yes. she won the eight. Yeah. She won the eight hundred. In the sixty eight Olympics. Yeah, sixty eight Olympics. And, and mm -hmm. we would uh, work out a little bit together. And mm -hmm. Wyma Matthias was there. She won the hundred. Mm -hmm. Back to might, back. Uh, yeah, I Olympics. think she might. I don't know if we won the relay that year or not. Mm -hmm. But Ties, uh Madeline Manning. And I think it may have been one other. I, I do remember Ralph Boston was on that team as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Ralph Boston was on the 68 team as well. Yep. Sure yeah, was. that was his mm -hmm. last one I think he competed in. Because uh, I think he, 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 he has a gold medal, a silver medal, and a bronze. And, a bronze, and I yeah. think the first one he won was the gold. Yeah. And then he That's won nice. the silver and then won. Uh, and bronze. What, mm -hmm. what is so ironic about it, he was leading uh, in, in 68. And he went up to uh, Bob Beeman mm -hmm. and gave him mm -hmm. some advice. He said, you need to move back <laughs> or something. 
And that's when Bieber hit the, the, the big leap, and I thought he had hurt himself or something, but he, had, he was so elated over the 29 foot that Ralph gave him some advice. And same thing happened with uh, Jesse Owens. Uh, he was, I think he was behind, and somebody gave him some advice, mm -hmm. and he ended up winning. Uh, well, was, was 68 in Mexico City? Mexico City, yeah. yes. Is that, that thin air probably helped. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. A a yeah. Bit. yeah, but Ralph was leading, though. Yeah. He was leading, and they ended up uh, getting the bronze medal, but he was leading. That's why I tell the athletes, don't give anybody any tips oh, yeah. <laughs> that you're competing against. In yeah. fact, don't even tell them good yeah. luck. Because yeah. <laughs> you just said, hey, uh, I, yeah. I hope you beat me. Yeah. I don't give that advice. But every year at the Rochelle Stevens Invitational Track Meet, and mm -hmm. this will be the 28th year, is uh, St. George's mm -hmm. Independent School set for May 26. It's for ages 2 to 75. Wow. But, you know, I can add, you, you know, oh. your all's age group. Oh, well, why not? And, 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 oh, and yeah. Mark and I might oh, yeah. set up yeah. a relay. Well, I'm, yeah. there, I'm there every year. <laughs> there every year, oh. giving out the medals. So oh, well, I'm going to be there if somebody lets me know mm -hmm. when it is. That's mm -hmm. all I need. I will let you know, uh, but this will be the well, 28th year. Well, let me year. ask both of y'all a question. You know, you, you see people drop the batons in the Olympics and in big races. Did that worry you and y'all's races that you might miss a baton exchange? Was that a big pressure? No, uh, not for a Tiger Bear. We have oh. never, <laughs> ever dropped a baton. Okay. That's this generation now. <laughs> and uh, in the United States, we had never lost a race in the four years that I was at Tennessee State. We have never lost a race. And uh, uh, may I add that for four years, I was the American record holder in the long jump for four consecutive years. The, there has never been an American woman to beat me in the long jump in uh, four consecutive years. Wow. In um, the 1959 Pan American Games, I placed second in the long jump. And uh, in my senior year at Tennessee State, I had the opportunity to be named the uh, Outstanding Athlete of the Year. I won the 100, I anchored the four by one, and I won the long jump. And um, Wilma was still in high school at that time, but she was, uh, she did not run with us on that uh, record setting four by one. See, we held the uh, American record in the four by one from 1956 to 60 when Wilma, remember all of us were from Tennessee State University. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's a great honor sure. to be from the same school, four runners from the same school. We did that in 56, and we also did it in 60. Well, how much uh, credit do you give to uh, Ed Temple for the success of those teams? Great, a great, he was a great coach. And uh, I, I tell people all the time, I have never Witness Coach Temple raising his voice at us. He has never used profanity around us. He has never shoved us like I see some coaches uh, reacting to the athletes. I have uh, great respect for his legacy. Yeah, well, he certainly was well recognized mm -hmm. for uh, all of the accomplishments and achievements. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, what uh, I think we've any final word? Any of the you three yeah. distinguished uh, guests want to <laughs> say well, because well, it's going to be on in the archives forever? <laughs> it well, uh, like like Ms. Woman said, um, just just thinking. Uh, I've been you know blessed to have uh, had a great coach in high school. When uh, Coach Wilburn, I went to Tennessee State, and I was actually mentored and helped uh, there by Ralph Austin. And from there, uh, when I came to University of Memphis, uh, spent one year with uh, Coach Larry Wright, and then with uh, Glenn Hayes. And uh, from there, who would have ever thought 
that a little, little guy from the belt line <laughs> could have end run a four or five mile. And, uh, uh, he hadn't been beaten yet. <laughs> well, I don't know about, but yeah. Uh, and and, and uh, well, it was just from, you know, grace of God for, for, for the ability, but I didn't, I didn't know I had it and just happened to uh, uh, just be, was directed by some great coaches and great people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, from well, and Ms. Stevens and Ms. Wilburn uh, probably know this, but, and we, we've talked about it before, uh, when you were right at the peak of your ability, your coach said, why don't you go in the service yeah. and keep running? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I said, uh, you stopped. I said, oh, well, that was being numb. You know, I said, oh, well, I don't know. But I, it was probably the worst mistake I ever made was not doing it because I was, uh, I, was right. I, I was on the brink of being the first uh, black person to break four minutes. Uh, the, the year I came out, uh, the guys that were ranked ahead of me were the uh, first guy to do it. Um, uh, his name is forgot. I slipped my mind. He was from Cincinnati. He was University of North, North Carolina. And had one guy, um, uh, Fulton, I think he was from uh, Texas Southern. He, those were the first two. But Reggie McAfee, that was his name. And I ran against Reggie at uh, the, I think it was the Dog Root relays up in Knoxville, but uh, um, yeah, about one more year. <laughs> well, you, you, you missed that, but you yes. had a lot of uh, wonderful mm -hmm. uh, yes. experiences and yes. family and right, all yes. those it's things that if you'd gone to Vietnam, it might not have ended up <laughs> oh, yeah, there. Like I you know, wanted. you never know. <laughs> yes, you never know. Because, you know, I, I, uh, Rochelle and I talk a lot because she, she loves children. She loves to help children. And uh, I tell her all the time, uh, we talk about track and what track has done for us. And we talk about track really opens the door for you. But the education part keeps it open. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I am um, uh, so proud of her. She has uh, just received her doctorate. Congratulations. And she is Dr. Rochelle Stevens, and um, uh, she just continues to help these children mm -hmm. learn her meat. And I really wish you would come out. Uh, everyone come out to the Rochelle Stevens meet. Just, uh, just let, let us know building. about it. We'll yes. be there. Right. And yes. we correct the record on this. Dr. Rochelle. Dr. Rochelle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. She's Dr. Rochelle. That's wonderful. It's official. I, I actually dropped tears over the Ph.D. I didn't drop any tears for the gold medal, but oh. I dropped some tears for that Ph.D. <laughs> like, wow. And I'm sure when, when you talk to young people, you can mm -hmm. talk about the value of both your mm -hmm. Olympic yes. experiences mm -hmm. and your educational experiences mm -hmm. and how, as Ms. Wilburn said, mm -hmm. that's what keeps you going, the education mm -hmm. experience, when uh, some of us get broken down and can't run quite like we used to. Well, uh, thank you uh, all for being here. It's been most interesting for me, and Bill, we'll just close it down. That's the way it works. Okay. All right. Again? No. Oh, no, it doesn't already.
uh, Calvin, uh, all these people that, that you how I'm how sad it is that I did Sistine Chapel. Hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't. I never finished the ceiling in there. So, <laughs> anyway, I, I, it's a pleasure and a privilege to have you guys come in and and be the first guinea hmm. pigs. And I look forward to the next groups that we have and. And it's going to be ongoing, so you may get a, I may be calling you back saying, hey, can you come in for another uh, taping in October, November, December, January? Who knows how long this will go on. Great. But uh, thanks again for coming, and I'd like to thank WKNO thank and yeah. the uh, studio folks here for uh, helping us with this. Okay, we're clear. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Thing, a and, couple and of what you need to do is have a session where there's no microphone. I can tell you this for okay. a also known as NUS. I'll start with uh, Richard and let him tell us a little This is Bill Butler. Okay, is everything good? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 